Yeah. I've stepped in that realm a couple times. Uh, let me remind you, as people of God and as children of God, sons and daughters of God, don't take your focus off God's purpose. Things are not always what they seem. We base things on what appears. God is a visionary. And if we're called and chosen of God, we must step into that visionary role. A visionary is someone that sees something that has not yet developed physically. Faith says it's going to happen. The substance of what God is working toward. God will have a church. Regardless of what I do, what you do, God will have a church. And the church the Bible talks about will never, ever, 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 ever stop functioning. And regardless of how I see things or you see things, God's work will continue. There are a number of people missing today. Uh, we could go and name names. Uh, probably not do that, but I do want to uh, pray for Sister Carla. She was... Uh, I don't know if she was getting ready for church. She was on her way to church, but her mom, uh, something happened. She, well, she just needs prayer. Amen. So I wonder if we could just all stand and stand in the gap for Sister Carla and her mother and her sister and her family. Lord Jesus, God, we thank you, Lord. We ask you, God, to intervene, God. We ask you to let your will be done, Lord Jesus. Step into that situation, oh God. Move on her behalf, Lord Jesus. Let your will, let your will be done. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen, amen. Before you are seated, amen, why don't you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. I'm going to take just a little bit of time this morning. Um, and just talk, talk to you. If you have your Bibles, let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And we're going to be looking down to verse 6 from verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 through verse 6. Amen. The Lord is good. Pray for those that are not here this morning. Amen. We are, uh, in some instances, being attacked, amen, by the enemy. He's such a liar. He is such a liar. I've been doing this long enough to I, I see it. He is such a liar. Amen. Praise God. Stay close to the church. Amen. Don't be deceived. Amen. Into believing his voice, his lie. Second Corinthians chapter 4, 1 through 6. 
says this. Therefore, seeing. <laughs> wow, I, I could just hit on this entire scripture and not even get into my lesson, but uh, Paul's writing and he's saying in vision, take a look at this. We have, we have, not Paul, not the apostle only, but the church has a ministry. It's a ministry that God has given us. How many of you are teaching a Bible study? How many of you are involved in reaching somebody? Praise God. This is what Paul is talking about. He was, he was not always Paul. Praise God. He was on the outside looking in, in at one time in his life. And so he writes, therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy. How many are thankful for God's mercy? Amen. Praise yeah. God. Without God's mercy, amen, you would not be in this place this morning. You would not experience or have experienced the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Then he says, but if our gospel be hid, uh, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest, here it is, the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and, our, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. What a life the great apostle had. Praise God. This man suffered so many different things. The whippings, the rejection, the slander. People were speaking against his life as he tried to do the best he could for God. Don't ever lose heart. Don't ever lose faith because you are being used in the kingdom of God to do right things. You're not the only one. Praise God. There are many people that have went on before you that have suffered great things doing good things. And Paul was one of those individuals. I've always wondered why we suffer, we go through situations. Why, do, why does it seem like things are always piling up on us? God, I'm only trying to do what's right. I'm only doing what you called me to do. I'm only trying to fulfill the purpose that you have for my life. And yet, all these things that are happening to me, praise God. And as we look in the life of Paul this morning, Paul had a way of reaching into his dark past before he was saved. 
and drawing out scenarios where it would benefit God's kingdom down the road. And that's the reason why we go through things. Now, God gives us grace to empower us to have enough strength to persevere through these battles. Ultimately, there is a victory. Ultimately, there won't be no battles once we get into heaven. But until then, we are going to fight. We are going to struggle. We are going to go through some things. But like Paul, we use those things, amen, to help other individuals as they go through the same thing. God will put you in a place where you can use your past, where you can use your addictions, where you can use whatever you were involved in in your previous life before you came to God to benefit somebody else. Praise God. And yet sometimes we mope and we cry and, and we go through all these emotions missing why we went through those things in the very first place. Now, I'm not saying God wanted us to go through those things. But God takes all the bad things that we went through, amen, and he uses it for the good of the kingdom. Praise God. And when Paul was living his life approximately 2,000 years ago, he always, had a, he always seemed to have a way of tying his issues and his circumstances, his experiences, amen, for this place of being beneficial to somebody else. Now, I'm talking about us, amen. If Paul can go through what he went through, and if Paul could persevere, and if Paul, amen, had the grace of God flowing through him, and if God empowered Paul, and if Paul was part of the church of the living God, then we who are part of the body of Christ, which is the same church as Paul was, we experienced the same thing as Paul experienced. We were born the same way that Paul was born then we could overcome like Paul did. We can persevere like Paul did. And so with every stroke of his pen, Paul had a way of expressing his encounter with Jesus, amen, when he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. You remember Paul, who was Saul of Tarsus before his conversion. There he was trying to track down this, this sect, this occult, if you will. Bible says he was so mad and he was so angry, amen, because they didn't follow the Jewish customs. Every breath, amen, he was breathing out threatenings and slaughter, praise God. He never had anything good to say about these Christians about Jesus. You remember in Acts 9, Saul of Tarsus, there he is traveling down, praise God, down the road to Damascus looking for Christians when he became face to face with the Lord. This was Saul's, praise God, real life testimony. He was so convinced, amen, of this experience that he had, praise God, that it profoundly affected everybody, amen, that he came in contact with. Everyone, why? Because he believed, amen, what he did, what he experienced, praise God. And so it was an astonishment Saul of Tarsus, amen, on that road, responds to this voice, praise God, as he's laying there on this dusty road headed for Damascus. It's there where Saul inquires of this voice, amen, and he says, who are you, Lord? 
And the Lord said, I am Jesus, amen. Saul of Tarsus, his reply, asked him, what do you want me to do, amen. And that is the voice, amen, that is screaming in your ear in 20 and 23. God, praise God, is calling you for a purpose God is calling you to fulfill your calling, amen. When God saved you and you responded, praise God, like Saul of Tarsus did and asked him, what do you want me to do, praise God? Are you, my friend, fulfilling the will of God? Are you fulfilling your calling, praise God? Are you stepping out? Are you being bold? Are you being emboldened, amen, with the grace, amen, that is flowing through you regardless of the persecution, regardless of your struggles, regardless of those that are resisting you? Are you putting all that aside and are you saying, amen, that God, your purpose is greater than anything that I am experiencing in this life? That's the question. What a beautiful picture of God speaking into a person's life. And watching a transformation, a great transformation, take place. We can envision a person experiencing God moving on their life, amen. God's presence shining down on them like it did that day with Saul of Tarsus. There they are, praise God, with this bright light glaring down upon them, amen, And they're somewhat blinded by this light, hey man. It's like stepping out of a dark room and trying to allow your eyes to adjust, amen, to this this light. You see, it was God. And it always will be God. And it always has been God that stepped out of eternity and stepped in to man's darkness. Why did he do that? He did that to shed light through the revelation of Jesus Christ. You see, Paul remembered the interview with Jesus that day. He sat down at the interview table, praise God, and God was questioning him, do you really want the job? Do you really want to step up to the challenge? Can I really rely on you investing, praise God, in the job that I have for you? Because the qualifications for this job might not be what you think it is. Are you willing to persevere, praise God, through the people that you're mentoring Are you willing to to suffer the rejection, amen, as you try to instill in them the things of God? That's the interview. That was the process. And so he gave Saul of Tarsus the choice, amen, just like he did with you, my friend. He gave you the choice, amen, What's more important to you? Staying home and relaxing or making yourself available for the kingdom of God? See, so many of us don't really see because the light is so profound, praise God. We don't always recognize, amen, because we're in this state, amen, between the dark and the light, this this gray area, praise God, this walking on the fence and teetering, praise God. You cannot walk on the fence and survive. The psalmist said it this way in Psalms 119 and verse 135. Make my face to shine upon thy servant 
Make thy face to shine upon thy servant and teach me thy statues. There was something about this psalmist. He desired the word of God. He wanted to know the word of God. He wanted to be taught the word of God. He just wanted God to speak to him. And you know and I know that Paul knew this scripture, praise God. He was a master, praise God, in the Torah. He was a master in the Old Testament. And still, with all this knowledge, praise God, oh yes, amen, you've been a Christian for 40 years, amen, but is it possible that you miss the mark? Not me. Paul missed the mark. He missed the mark like many do still today. Saul, like many individuals, had this fervency for God, this zeal for God and his word, but Saul misunderstood the Christian way. He didn't get it. He didn't understand, praise God, this kingdom perspective, praise God. He thought, amen, yeah, if I could just, amen, do this or I could just do that, but God is looking for a relationship. He doesn't just want you to show up. He wants to know you and he wants you to know him. And when you know him, my friend, a relationship, a love relationship develops, praise God, amen. And when a love relationship develops, amen, you will want to do anything, amen, for your, for your spouse, praise God. Or at least you ought to want to do anything for your spouse. Nobody should beckon you to do something. It's something that is ingrained in you. Nobody should have to tell you to witness to people. It is something that should be ingrained in you. No one should tell you to teach a Bible study. It's something that should be ingrained in you. God's word should be instilled in you where you have such a fervency to get out and find a Bible study. Find somebody that you can witness to you. Find someone that you can say, I, I know what you're going through. I've been through that. Let me show you what God did. You see, in Saul's mind, the gospel message was contrary to everything that he was taught. And so he apprehended and arrested these fishermen and these Christ followers. It's amazing, the, the Word of God. The Word of God is comprised of many books, 66 to be exact, amen, and there are letters and poems and Writings and stories and different illustrations of men that were used by God under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And there's such a beauty in, in the Scripture, amen, how God in His greatness has a way of blending these stories and these, these situations, amen, that the people of God face through all time. How God blends it together to bring out a thought or a revelation so the church, us, can have a greater understanding of his true purpose. It's awesome how he does that. It's awesome how he parallels the scriptures, praise God. And you see this and you say, man, that is awesome. 
I didn't even see that before. We've all done it. We all experienced it, and you will again. When we look at Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, amen, it describes the creation of our physical world and how God created the heavens and the earth and how God describes how they were without form and void and there was darkness upon the face of the deep. And the Genesis account describes the Spirit of God moving, praise God. And it reminds us how light was divided from darkness and this was a new day or the first day. It was something different. And then we look at John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, where it parallels the Genesis account as John writes, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and all things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made profound. And in Him was life. And He was the light of man, and this light shined in darkness, amen. God stepped in. He stepped out of eternity and into the light, into a world that was dark, and the world did not comprehend it. So Moses gives us a picture of God's physical creation in the Genesis account, and John gives us a picture of God's spiritual creation in John's account. And in the book of Acts, we see the fulfillment of John's prophetic insight through Luke's writings when Saul had his spiritual encounter with Jesus. We see this in Acts chapter 9, verse 3. Saul's on his journey as we read to Damascus, and there suddenly shined round about him a light from heaven, and Saul fell to the earth. And there he heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why are you fighting against me? Now just to be clear, for all you theologians, the Holy Ghost had already been poured out. It was poured out on the day of Pentecost. So this is just one account of God's spiritual intervention for mankind. And so we understand in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6. There's a strong implication that Paul was writing about his spiritual, his transformation when he went to the city of Damascus. He was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and we believe he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Paul writes, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Again, we see how Paul is describing, amen, the creation of the world and and part of John's, amen, writings, praise God, had shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge or our experience the things that we, amen, have faced, praise God. You see, Paul was teaching from his experience when he said, if our gospel be hid, if our gospel, he, he, he embraced it now. What was somebody else's gospel was now his gospel. If our gospel is hid to them that are lost, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, less the light, the light that John was talking about, less the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. You see, Paul's experience in Acts 9 is explained Again, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, as the Bible beautifully blends a wonderful picture of God's love for man 
in man's awesome transformation towards God. Praise God. For Saul of Tarsus, the one that, that hated the Christians, the one that hated Jesus, praise God. For Saul of Tarsus, amen, it was a new day. It was the first day of his creation, praise God. Becoming a new Christian, my friend, is not easy. It's not something that is done on the surface, praise God. It's not superficial, praise God. When God created the world, it could not be successful if it was not going to be or if it was going to be only superficial. It had to begin deep within the earth. Why, praise God? Because there were going to be seeds that had to be planted, praise God. There had to be a cultivation process for the roots to take root. Things had to be developed, praise God. Colossians chapter 2, verse 7 says, rooted and built up, praise God. Rooted and built up, rooted and built up. Why? So we can be established in this lifestyle as we have been taught. Abounding. And here's the problem. With thanksgiving, sometimes we lose, praise God, sight of why we should be thankful. Oh, I got to go to church again today? Oh, no, we're having Sunday school and we're going to add an extra hour? Where's your perspective? How are you looking at the kingdom of God? Don't you realize that church, amen, as we know it, could drastically change. That ain't going to happen. Yes, it's going to happen, my friend. That's why we make every effort to be at the house of God, praise God. There are men and women in our world, amen, that are trying to change what we do. So we understand. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, is a strong implication that Paul was writing about his transformation. His transformation. God's transforming power is an act of God that penetrates into the very depths of man's being, praise God. He's trying to create something that is eternal, praise God. And he knows it cannot be superficial. And so it is that this transformation that Paul is writing about so moved Paul that it repeats this very thought in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. He says this. He says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He is a new creation, praise God. I'm not the same man that I used to be. Yeah, I might look the same, praise God, but I don't act the same. There's something inside of me that has changed, praise God. This is why the gospel is so astounding, praise God. It has a way of penetrating deep within a person's soul, praise God, and plant seed, praise God, that will change that individual. He will begin to produce fruit, amen. Things will grow out of his life, man, praise God, and change everything you know about him. And so this is what we saw in the life of Paul. The world leaders of his time were astonished from Paul's or Saul's transformation because Saul was a blasphemer. Saul was a killer of Christians, praise God. King Agrippa, Festus, Felix, they were all astonished at what Paul had become. They 
question him. How many are astounded at what you became? Do people see you differently? Is your life been altered by the seed of God's word that has been planted deep inside of you? Are you a different person? Or when you get out of the church, do we act like everybody else? Wasn't like that for Paul. They were astounded. Paul now begins to show us the condition of man without the effect of the gospel on man's life. See, before this light, man was ignorant. That's me and that's you and that's everybody before us. Man by nature untouched by the gospel of Jesus Christ was and is in a state of darkness. Total ignorant of this spiritual world that God has for us. He lacks spiritual knowledge. So John, chapter 3, verses 19 through 20 says this, and this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world and men love, they love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth light. Neither cometh to the light, lest their deeds, their actions should be reproved. They love sin because they don't want to live right. So when it comes to worldly knowledge, really man is very intelligent. God created them that way. We have a mind to think, a heart to feel, a will to do certain things. Look at the inventions in 2023, and they're going to magnify, amen, as this world continues on. Look at our, our iPhones, our computers, uh, and whatever social media, amen, is showing you. Our intellect cannot be disputed. We are. By the grace of God, intelligent beings. But if we were left to ourselves, our life would be in total darkness, chaos. Just like God when he created the world, amen. It was chaotic. It was dark. It was void. It was empty. And man, without the gospel of Jesus Christ, this life, praise God, that John was writing about, he is the light, praise God, that steps into darkness, that changes, amen, your circumstance. He is the light. He is the revealer of those dark areas in your life. He came to change your chaotic situation. But the world laughs at the Bible with every breath. The world exhales. It's with threatenings and slaughter. The world believes its ways are superior, amen, to God's ways. Sadly, man goes about his day never looking at himself. He stumbles in a state of dark spiritual chaos. We could go look on the internet at all the chaotic things that are going in our world, wars and rumors of wars and all these things, amen. And people are dying for fear of what's going to happen. Don't look at what's going to happen, praise God. Look at where God has us right 
Now, praise God. Mankind doesn't even understand, praise God, that he is appointed once to die and then he's going to stand, amen, at the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. You see, the issue is he wants to be good, but he doesn't know how. He doesn't have the power. He is spiritually ignorant, praise God. Turn us again. Psalms chapter 80, verse 3, O God, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. You see, many of us have an experience in God. Just like we did today, we felt the moving of the Holy Ghost, but that does not, it does not complete our purpose. It does not fulfill what God has for us. We have to understand, friend, that God brought us into this marvelous kingdom, this great kingdom, this spiritual kingdom, praise God. But we fail to recognize, amen, that there is another kingdom, amen, that opposes us. It bes- it's trying to besiege us, praise God. It's trying to encamp around us, praise God. You have to open your eyes, amen, and don't look at all the things, amen, that are trying to tear you down. God's army is greater, amen, than the armies of the world, praise God. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 and 13, Paul's writing again, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of another world. He saw it, he got it. He understood that Satan can conform himself into an angel of light where thoughts, what we think, in ideas, praise God. How are we going to put these thoughts into motion? They sure do feel good. They look right. But have you approached God, amen? Did God give the approval? See, if we're not careful where these thoughts and ideas are coming from, It can catch us unaware. It can put you in a place of spiritual ignorance. It can throw you back into the dark ages, amen, where there's chaos. And so through his writings, Paul is, it's awesome. I always, when I read Paul's writings, I always go back to that road to Damascus where where God is shining this light upon him. And in his writings, amen, it seems like he always goes back and he remembers. He remembers how God found him. His state of mind, praise God, where he was in his life when God found him. And so he, pen, he begins to pen his writings, amen. And he begins to teach the church of the living God, amen. He begins to warn the church, amen, about having a balanced life. If we're not balanced, we can stumble. We won't walk right. Any little thing, anywhere you go, it's going to trip you up because you're not strong enough. Your core is not strong enough. When when you go to the gym, the first thing I used to ask, how can I get bigger muscles and a bigger chest? They said, let's work on your core first. If your core isn't strong enough, Big muscles ain't going to help you because it's gonna, someone's going to throw you off balance and, and these muscles, that you won't be able to use them the way, amen, that, that you probably want to use them because your strength is gone. What holds you up, what's supposed to hold you up is your core. So a person can stumble, not walk right. Sometimes we'll look in other avenues to try to improve, amen, our spiritual man. And sometimes that's good, but everything we need 
is in the Word of God. All you have to do is search it out. All you have to do is take your time. All you have to do is remember that table where you had an interview with Jesus Christ and he was going through the scenarios, amen. You want to be a manager someday. You want to take care of my stuff, praise God. You're going to have to learn, amen, how this company's ran, amen. And the only way that you're going to do that, amen, is to pick up the book. Pick up the manual. See how this company's uh, ran, praise God. Look at the rules. You see, people fail to grasp the meaning of God's word. It's not just a book. It's not just 66 books, praise God. It is a profound writing, amen, that has the ability to save your soul. And if it lays on a shelf somewhere in your house, you ain't doing yourself any, any, any justice. As we come to a close, Sister Tamara, please come up. The Word of God is not only here for forgiveness of sins, and that's part of it. The Word of God is here to transform lives, but the church you and me must be willing to dig deep in our past and utilize the experiences that brought us here so God can use us there. Praise God. I hope I got this point across. I'm just trying to get us to understand that God's word is not, cannot, never will be, superficial cannot be the gospel is not partial it's a way of life the gospel is the key for every aspect of life it takes up the whole man and it gives us balance amen let's stand Close our eyes. And let's just...